Hello everyone. We are Cornelia and Peter. We are poets. We come from Hungary. To give you a hint, Hungary is a country that adores animals. And is not completely against animal rights either. Uh, as this is the sixth birthday of the European Poetry Festival, we really wanted to offer something memorable, something special, something animalistic, something post-anthropocentric, something after which you would never like to eat a chicken again. <laughs> so, we prepared with various mental and physical activities for tonight. Um, we had to do so because the starting point for our animalistic topic was Peter. This is Peter. Hey. Um, and Peter had some recent life-changing activities, because I'm sorry to say uh, Peter had a lot going on lately, but I think probably it should be him who talks about it. So Peter, please. It is not grief diffusing through me, but emptiness. And what the blind see is in darkness, but nothing. But we can't imagine nothing. And in fact, even a vacuum is never completely empty. For years they thought there was nothing around the moon, but a vacuum. Yet, it too has a thin, okay, okay, the red stop, just stop atmosphere. Just stop it, just stop it. When you use the word vacuum twice, they get it. They get the juice of it. <laughs> So, uh, because of this, uh, Peter had some major problems. Um, he kind of lost his human readers. Uh, what's more, he also lost his appetite for human readers, so it's not only about no one would read him, but he wouldn't like to have mere human readers anymore. Um, and the solution he came up with is kind of disturbing, and it's not uh, an easy way of saying this, but I'm just going to say it. Uh, Peter started an animal farm for poets. He started an animal farm for disillusioned poets who would like to write with and uh, read for chicken. Um, and, and I was the first guest at this farm. Uh, I can tell you about the rules, they are very simple. So if you are a poet of any nationality, so no, no one is excluded, uh, you can apply for it, and then you can spend a week there at Peter's farm. There will be some mandatory creative writing activities, and there will be some quality time with the animals and with Peter. Um, and um, so as far as I recall, uh, it was a mixture of holiday, forced labor camp, and the shining. Uh, but uh, there was a nice things there going on. So, for example, Peter named his favorite chicken Steve. For me, that was very comforting. Uh, and Peter really loves to read his poems about birds, the chicken Steve. And it is such a nice moment when he does so. I would like you to imagine it vividly. So, uh, I'm gonna enact uh, chicken Steve and uh, <laughs> Peter will do the reading part. Are you ready, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> the Majolica Swan is a let down. Though it's true that in this story, a bird tows the hero's boat to shore. In the wake of two lost wars, this is not perhaps the most effective myth to encourage the flowering of a dominion symbols. The creature selected of, is of key importance. It may be embroidered in gold on red silk, onto chair covers and bedspreads. Centuries later, its impact may be decisive as much on the takings of cheese shops and dairy farms as on ski lift traffic in the Southern Alps. The tour begins here. Okay, you can speak back, so let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Peter did something more as well. So he also set up a website 
where you can watch uh, quite resensitive chicken all day long, 24-7, uh, it is called Handflix. Uh, and you think I'm kidding, but we are going to show you Handflix. This is Handflix. This is he. Yeah, the, the big one. Yeah. Yay. And this is Chicken Steve. Yeah, attack him. Attack him, yeah. Um, so at this point, I would like to read the poem that I wrote uh, at the farm. First, he wanted to make a living by selling the eggs. But the chicken became depressed from poetry and didn't feel like laying eggs anymore. <laughs> So Peter came up with the idea that users could feed the chicken online for money. He is considering the same with feeding the poets now. But of course this is not about the money. It is all about changing human-centered poetry. At least that's what he told me. The rain meticulously licks out the cut sepals and I see the air's knots and its tangles. Insects, fishing bats and emerald hummingbirds perform pollination under the evergreen branches with repellent gentleness. The foliage is like a poisoning around the mute pedagogy of the stones. Who wouldn't bite down to the stem? Who wouldn't scoop out the earth's clammy reproductive organs? I watched as an anteater violated the flower's modesty. A sticky mass collected in the flower's rostellum, the strip of woodland floated into smoke, body into memory. The foliage was like a poisoning. Soft rain drizzled onto my abilities. Last but not least, uh, in order to offer a more precise picture of the farm, of Peter's farm, I would like to share my diary entries from the week that I spent at the farm. So, day one. Among the midst of Hungarian hills, I found Peter's farm. I haven't seen him in months. Fresh air did him some good. He has a beard and wears a cloak and a pair of boots. Very Gandalf-like. But instead of hobbits, he has 42 chickens. He said the installation of piped water is on the way. At the gate of the farm, there was an entry question. What rhymes with M? He asked with a flash in his maddened eyes. I failed to answer it. Failing is the gate to real poetry, he said to me. Just in brackets, uh, in Hungarian it's not really easy to do a rhyme with hen because it is kyuk in Hungarian, kyuk. Can you say it with me on three? One, two, three, kyuk. Wonderful. You should only remember one Hungarian word, this is one. So, let me continue. Day two. Peter runs creative writing sessions among the hands. I try to feel the rhythm of the hands. New forms are rising. Day three. It is quite disturbing to wake up 4 a.m. in the morning and hear Peter shouting, Steve, Steve, where are the eggs? <laughs> Day four and five. What can a poet learn from a chicken? Tolerating monotony, I guess. Laying eggs would be my second choice. A fan boat carves a path through the sweltering heat, the hum of its propeller scattering herons and darters from among the aerial roots. Every man is terrifying. You'd rather be an anteater in a cat shark's dream. You'd shed your white middle-class skin hardening shame into reptilian scales. You'd assume the outer covering of a tortured region. Day six. I have officially become a vegetarian. 
Peter wanted to talk me into staying on the farm. I have grown a beard instead. Day seven. Even though I only wrote one poem the whole week, Peter was very productive. He announced the final performance, the chicken coop sessions. Oh, for some blonde naturalists to trap you mid-ropes, quiet near some holiday maker's paradise. Your empathy would acclimatize like the temperature of blood to the cold puddles, and time like the blood circulation would be reversible. But you're not one of them. You will never know the phenomenology of a tick. The escape routes of guilt lead you back into the body. It's your fault. The mud skippers still remember the massacre of the native born, their place taken by colonies of prisoners, and the descendants of these former convicts turn back the dinghies even close to the shore of the flaming. It's your fault. The mouth of the ravine still echoes the screams of the murdered. It tells of the golden age of creation, when formless space was delineated. Things took form, damselfish were born, and birds of paradise 